strength, beauty, two things that are really fun to play with. We're talking about super compressors, geez, grow up. It is 3.26 p.m., let's get down to business. Okay guys, so in the watch world, you may have heard the term super compressor and you might know what they look like, like the general aesthetic of a super compressor, but you might not know what a super compressor actually is. So in the late 1950s, Irvin Picarez SA, and I'm probably totally butchering that manufacturer's name, but they started producing nautical watches that had a really interesting case design. It was actually a patented design, and there was a whole bunch of technology that went into it. So essentially, this case utilized pressure to increase the case's seal. So theoretically, the deeper this watch went underwater, the more pressure built up, which enhanced the seal and gave the watch an increased water resistance rating. Very cool. This was known as a super compressor. And that's kind of it. That is that is what a super compressor is. So to answer the title of this episode, what is a super compressor? That. But if you want to stick around for the rest of the episode, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Underwater. Enhance, enhance, enhance that water resistant. Compress it. It's, it's still, you're, you're not laughing. It's still not funny, okay. We're gonna go a bit deeper and take a look at some of the more prolific super compressors throughout history. Now we should note, not every watch with a super compressor aesthetic, uh, not every watch with a dual crown system is a true super compressor. You see, as I mentioned earlier, that case design that Irvin Picarez SA was developing, it was patented and it was actually licensed out to a bunch of other watchmakers, whether it be uh, Zenith, JLC, Hamilton, Bulova. We're going to take a look at all of those today. Well, maybe not all of them, but some of them, a lot of them. But you know, things like this Boulder Expedition or the Notice Duality, although they are kind of super compressor style, they don't have that patented super compressor case design. Uh, so, you know, you can't really call it a true super compressor. Now, I know a couple years ago, people got very, very excited about the Orient King Diver reissue for their 70th anniversary celebration. And uh, yeah, it was a super compressor, right? It was um, going to be celebrating this really old school design. Ends up this reissue, I don't think is actually a true super compressor. It does have a 200 meter water resistance rating, but I don't think it utilizes an actual super compressor case. I could be wrong, but from what I researched, uh, it's not a true super compressor. Now these super compressor style watches, the Boulder Expedition, the Notice Duality, that Orient uh, King Diver reissue, they're all functional in their own right, but there are a bunch of really, really cool watches throughout history uh, that are true super compressors. So let's take a look at a few. Now the first one I wanna talk about is a watch that uh, pops up at auction once in a while and it typically goes for a pretty penny and it's from one of my favorite watchmakers, uh, Hamilton. They made a Hamilton Aqua Date 600, which is a dual crown super compressor, and it's just very, very vintage, retro, cool, uh, and I absolutely love it. But I found one at auction, uh, let's see, about two years ago, and they were asking like $24.99, I think, almost $2,500, and I just decided to put that money elsewhere. But um, yeah, eventually I would absolutely love uh, to get one of these old Hamilton dive watches. It's just really, really cool. And very much related to that Hamilton is an old Benrus, uh, the Benrus Ultra Deep 666. Six, six. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're getting a date complication, you're getting that super compressor case, uh, you know, very, very functional, very legible. Uh, this one has a dark dial, whereas the Hamilton had, you know, a uh, Typically when you find these uh, aqua dates, it is that kind of almost ivory dial at this point as it's aged. But don't sleep on Benris, man. They had some really cool watches throughout history and uh, the super compressor is no different. Now some of the more common vintage super compressors you will find are from Bulova. They happen to make a bunch of them and uh, yeah, typically dark dial, very, very simple. Uh, I've seen some with dates and I believe I've even seen some without dates. 
Uh, I think most of them don't have date complications, um, but yeah, again, very high legibility, very simple in design, and it is a true super compressor. You just have to be careful uh, because, you know, a lot of these are redialed, a lot of these have not aged well, and uh, just because these watches did have that very uh, kind of interesting case patent doesn't mean that they're going to be able to be submerged nowadays. So just be careful with the ones that you do have and make sure they're in proper health before you actually uh, get any of these vintage super compressors wet. Now because this super compressor design was kind of passed around from JLC to Zenith, I think Blancpain even had one, uh, Hamilton, Bulova, Benrus, we've taken a look at some of them. Um, we can't really exclude the fact that there are some more modern takes on the super compressor. And again, they are true super compressors. Things like the JLC Master Compressor Diving Chronograph, that's a very complicated take on a super compressor. And uh, something a bit more simple, but very, very modern, the new Baltic Aquascaf. And I would love to have one of these for review. If any of you have a connection over at Baltic, let them know. I'd love to take a look and do it for Microbrand Monday. So guys, leave me a comment in the comment section I know just because like from interacting in the comment section, uh, some people really don't like dual crown watches, period. And some people just will never get behind anything that has two crowns. And I get that, different strokes for different folks. Some people absolutely love the look of a super compressor. So let me know, do you have a true super compressor watch in your com or in your collection? And then in the comment section, let me know, do you have any, uh, you know, things like this, which is super compressor style. Uh, I have a couple super compressor style watches, but I have yet to own a true super compressor. So maybe I'll pull one from this list. Who knows? That Hamilton man. I want that Hamilton. So guys, we've taken a look at some super compressors. Now we know what they actually are. And I think we can all agree. These don't just look cool. They stay cool under pressure. <laughs> All right, guys, well, if you enjoyed this episode and it helped you out a bit, I'm going to add this to the videos for new collectors. That's right, we have a full playlist of episodes for people just entering the hobby. Even if you're, you know, an avid collector, uh, check out that playlist because there's a whole bunch of really good information in there. Things that I wish I knew when I first started collecting. So uh, yeah, maybe pop over there. And we have a whole bunch of other playlist things dedicated to every uh, everyday watches, ex excuse me. We have things uh, dedicated to chronographs. We even have a playlist dedicated to my crazy Friday rants. So uh, yeah, we got it all for you. Thanks for hanging out with me today on this episode. And uh, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and I will see you on the next one. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>